The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johnson. Good morning and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johnson. Many of Alabama's muddy rivers drain into Mobile Bay, and that brown water is actually teeming with life. Today on Simply Southern, we'll see that sea life up close as we visit the estuarium at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab. Farms in Alabama cover thousands of acres, so it's not always possible for farmers to keep an eye on their crops. But the latest technology is helping farmers see the places they can't be. And Sidney Phelps is getting started with early season growing. This week, he'll show you how to make containers for early season herbs and salad ingredients. But we're kicking off the show this week visiting with a Birmingham artist who is using yesterday's junk to tell the story of his generation. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. The blessing of Alabama agriculture is more than three meals a day. It means independence from foreign nations, freedom to pursue other jobs and activities, conservation of natural resources, and preservation of family values. For 93 years, the Alabama Farmers Federation has brought together the men and women whose work fills our plates and fuels the American dream. For nearly 50 years, the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama have been giving young people an opportunity to visit our nation's capital, where they learn about the value of electric cooperatives and the importance of grassroots advocacy. Top students join with thousands of others touring monuments, landmarks, and meeting with their congressional delegation. The Rural Electric Youth Tour Program, just one more way the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama are investing in the future of our state. I'm just like my customers. I work hard and I play hard. I also help my dad on the farm when I can. That's the great thing about Alpha. We work hard for our customers. It's more than price. It's personal attention and great claim service. Hey, bud. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Whether through paint, song, or sculpture, art usually contains a message. And that's just how our next subject describes himself, a messenger. While his work is certainly unconventional, you won't walk away from Joe Menner's Birmingham home without seeing something you probably didn't expect. For nearly three decades, Joe Menner has been telling a story. The result can be a bit overwhelming to the eyes, but look a little closer and you'll no doubt see familiar details emerge. Using everything from scrap iron to bowling balls, Joe Menner has built his African village in America as a message to what he sees as a troubled younger generation. What this is is a footprint. And what a footprint is, it's passed on to the next generation. So I saw back in about 89, a falling apart of American family. So I asked God to give me what you would call a vision. So this is God's blueprint. This is what you would call my part of what I had to give back as a messenger to what you would call the next generation. So my tap in is with the next generation. Where some artists work with paint, Minner has chosen to work with what many would call junk. But to Joe, it's much more than that. I'm making a picture so you can see history and walk through it at the same time, feel it and touch it and part of us because we use it to produce what we are. You just play about old places where all of us live and you see piles of stuff. That was a record. He could go to that pile and pull out something and say, I can tell you a whole story on what he throw that on that pile and what it did for it. It ain't no way you can go without seeing something that our ancestors touched. So I'm just picking up what they touch, what I touch, so children along the way can feel what we are. 
As a lifelong Birmingham native, the city's industrial past is represented throughout its different creations. I would start off with wood because iron has got to be iron. Now you can go through here and find a piece of iron that's been produced and been used in every kind of way it is. Birmingham is blessed. This area right here got the formation of what they take in the formula to make iron. We got limestone and we got coal and we got that old iron oak. God bless them. His sculptures touch on history, social struggle, and religion, from the tragedies that shook the world to more recent controversial issues. Minner stresses the importance of leaving a clear record for future generations. We done got to a spot now where we are ashamed of our own self and don't want to tell our own self our story and what done happened to children and went haywire. Because we won't tell them the truth. Be proud of what you've done because if you hadn't done, we wouldn't be being here today. With his property overlooking two historic African-American cemeteries, Minner feels his efforts to leave a visual legacy are part of something larger. I'm talking to ancestors here. I got five, I got about 100,000 of them penetrating us to be able to accept and hear what we got to say and what it is is a tribute. This is part of the finish of the end of the beginning to get an understanding of what was the African saying. His music said something, but what was his thought, vision, as he said? Look at all this history. Young folk could walk through here and ask the question, what is that? If you're interested in more information on Joe Manor's African Village in America, or maybe taking a tour yourself, you can visit his Facebook page at facebook.com slash Joe Manor African Village. Jim, that really does look like an amazing place with all the sculptures and everything he has there. Yeah, he's got a lot of time and his passion there. And you notice all the, the metal. I walked through the whole thing and didn't need stitches. That's wonderful because you're a little clumsy. So. <laughs> true enough, true enough. Right. Now, when Simply Southern continues, we get a peek at the sea life that makes its home in the murky waters of Mobile Bay. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy, all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. Seriously? Have some respect. Pick it up, man. Did you just litter? Take pride in your school. Pick it up, man. Clean it up, dude. Besides keeping your campus clean, adopt Amaya with Roadside Cleanup. Attend the next Coastal Cleanup Day or pitch in on the annual Spring Cleanup Campaign. Make a difference by picking up litter and... Don't drop it on Alabama! Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. From the Mobile Tensaw River Delta, through Mobile Bay and the Barrier Islands, to the Gulf of Mexico, a magical world of aquatic creatures can be observed. The estuarium at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab provides a glimpse into the world under the sea and the animals that are devoting full time to floating. Alabama's southernmost point, Dauphin Island, is surrounded by majestic and mysterious waters, with Mobile Bay on one side and the Gulf of Mexico on the other. And at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab's estuarium, visitors get to see the sea creatures that live in that water. It was the vision of Dr. John Dindo, who has been involved since the beginning more than 40 years ago. The estuarium's 
our, our means of getting coastal marine science in Alabama out to the general public. So we, we do a lot of different types of work here, lots of different life in and around Mobile Bay. And so this, this is a way for us to show the public that comes through exactly what lives in and around Mobile Bay. Visitors to the public aquarium wind through numerous tanks and educational exhibits. The tour follows the movement of water starting with aquatic life found in the Mobile Tinsaw River Delta, then it's creatures from Mobile Bay and the Barrier Islands, and the tour ends with animals that call the Gulf of Mexico home. All the animals inside the estuarium obviously come from here. They come from the Delta, they come from the Bay, from the Gulf. We'll go out looking for just one, maybe one specific species. In all, the 10,000 square foot facility has 31 aquariums, filled with over 30,000 gallons of water and more than 100 species on display, proving animals love living in the muddy rivers that feed the nation's fourth largest watershed. The bay is a receiving basin for 43 billion gallons of water a day. And that water is brown. It's brown because we've got the river systems that are brown. But that brings nutrients and food into the bay system where the life of the bay is teeming, and it's teeming because of those food resources. Dindo said field trips to the estuarium are extremely popular, drawing school visitors from Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi, Georgia, and even Kentucky. Estuarium staff provide educational activities that fit K-12 curriculum. Plus, there's interactive exhibits featuring the prehistoric horseshoe crab. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guy. And a 7,000-gallon ray and shark touch pool public and the kids like the shark and ray tank because they can get up close, they swim right close to the surface, you can actually reach down and touch them. The Sea Lab even has dormitories for school groups or businesses that want to make a week-long trip. With additional outdoor attractions, including a children's play area, boardwalk, and salt marsh, it might take a week to see everything. Obviously, this is part of a salt marsh behind me here. Uh, so all, all of this boardwalk is part of the educational. That's why there are uh, signage throughout the whole walk that highlights the types of animals you would find if you walk out into that, into that marsh. Dindo said he wants to make sure visitors, especially students, leave the facility with treasured memories and a passion for exploring their environment. If I get them into the salt marsh where they can feel the plants, they can smell the mud, they can pick up the fish, then that's a lasting impression. That makes a connection that they'll never forget in their life. I guess, to me, messages that I hope they get out of that and out of our education program is passion. A passion for the environment, a passion for the abundance of life of plants and animals that live all around us. Whether it's a marine environment, the mountains, the forest, if you stop, listen, smell, and look, you know, you can develop that, that passion that, make, that makes us all part of this world. You can find out more about the estuarium online at disl.org backslash estuarium. They're open year-round, only closing for major holidays, so really it's the perfect stop on your next beach trip down to Gulf Shores. You know, I can't imagine see all, seeing all of that in one day. What was your favorite animal? My favorite, they have an octopus tank, and you know, it's just about this big, but you don't really think about an octopus living in Mobile Bay, so that, that was really neat. Oh, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. After the break, it looks like a toy, but farmers say it's actually a valuable farming tool. We'll look at the use of unmanned aerial vehicles or drones in agriculture when Simply Southern continues. Alabama wheat and feed grain farmers grow food, fuel, and freedom. Their harvest helps feed Alabama's multi-million dollar livestock, catfish, and poultry industries while reducing America's dependence on foreign countries for energy and food. By combining their strength with farmers of other commodities, 
feed grain growers are fueling the economic growth of Alabama communities. Today's farming operation is more complex than ever before, with precision agriculture becoming an integral piece to farm management. AccuField provides precision agriculture technologies and site-specific management capabilities in a simplified and interactive format, helping you put all the pieces of the farming puzzle together. For more information, visit us at www.accufield.com. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy, all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. From driving mules, to driving tractors, to tractors that practically drive themselves. Successful farmers are those that have embraced technology. As Kevin Worthington tells us, the evolution of technology is taking agriculture to new heights. With us getting more irrigation, uh, when you add that uh, and more acres every year, uh, it gets a little more complex trying to, trying to manage everything, trying to see uh, how each pivot is working and are all the nozzles putting out and you know, after the corn gets to a certain height you can't just walk up to a pivot and see if all the nozzles are, are putting out properly so having a drone like this will allow us to fly over it and uh, check out the nozzles, check out the end guns, make sure everything's running like it's supposed to. Brandon Moore and his father Mike grow corn, soybeans and wheat on 3,500 acres in North Alabama. Their goal is for every acre to produce to its maximum potential. They see technology, and in this case, drones specifically, as a way to help them reach that goal. Farming the same ground for, for you know, several generations like my family has, you get a feel for a certain field. You, you know where the good spots are and where the bad spots, and, and having this drone will allow us to go directly to those spots to see how a particular variety of corn or soybeans or wheat are responding to a spot that we know in the field is usually a, a high producing spot or a low producing spot or a wet spot or unusually dry or hard spot. So we think this will give us a lot of ability to scout large acreages of crops more efficiently uh, than we do now having to go out there physically. Tommy Whitaker, who operates a hobby shop for remote control enthusiasts, says this technology may be new to the southeast but it's not new to agriculture. He says Midwestern farmers with lots of acres have been successfully using drones for about the last 10 years. Growers can examine crop conditions from the onboard camera while the drone is airborne, or can study the high quality video once it's landed. The videos that we took today, uh, those were recorded on a micro SD card, and that SD card is being uploaded to a, uh, a computer as we speak. You'll be able to review that video. It's, uh, I believe we filmed in 1440 wide today, so high def video. And uh, you can get a lot more detail by going back and post-processing that video. You may see things that uh, you didn't see while we were watching the real-time system. The copter comes with a number of features. One allows a producer to monitor certain plots at various times in the growing season during variety trials or for other reasons. The Waypoint system is based off a of GPS and it basically is a, an underlying Google map that would come up on your iPad and you can go out and define a Waypoint pattern for a particular area like this field that we did today. You can save that Waypoint pattern off and the farmer can come back and uh, basically repeat that Waypoint pattern as many times as he or she likes and uh, it's, it's a very simple system, uh, you know, uh, doesn't require a lot of flight knowledge of the machine. Whitaker says most people can master the basics of flying in a couple of hours. Moore, meanwhile, says the drone has already saved him a lot of time and trouble as he prepared to begin wheat harvest. We had one field that we just always start in and we knew we were going to start there and we flew the drone over it and we found out that the field edges were very dry and ready to pick but once we got out into the middle of the field the stalks were still green and still a lot of green in the heads 
So we just decided, you know, right then on the spot, within you know five minutes of flying the drone, that well, this field needs another couple of days before we start. Various models range in size from about the size of a bread box to the equivalent of a four-foot diameter table. And prices began at about $1,000 and can climb as high as $10,000 depending on the size of the aircraft and its features. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. You probably heard stories of near misses between airplanes and drones. Well, the Federal Aviation Administration is developing policies to regulate them. Right now, the primary rules are to never fly them above 400 feet or in close proximity to an airport. That's one of those kind of dull rules, too. I, I can't imagine somebody thinking, hey, let's go fly this near an airport. It's like somebody pumping gas with a lit cigarette. Exactly just right. Just a knucklehead. Yeah, just stay away. Right after this break, Sydney Phelps from Bonnie Plants joins us to talk about early season growing for herbs and salad ingredients. As an alpha agent, I know we start out protecting ourselves and the things that we cherish, but I just recently got engaged. And let me tell you, life is coming fast. So we want to protect the people we love. I can't wait to see what life brings. Alpha insurance is for wherever you are in life. And for what's next. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your quality co-op store. There's one near you. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The tag funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. Now today we're in the greenhouses. I want to talk about planting some containers that you can use for your everyday needs instead of having to use a whole garden. Now, Many of us don't have all the space that we can do to do a raised bed or even grow in the ground, and the containers make things a little bit easier. Well, with this early season process, you can make a lot of different concept ideas that you can find online at bonnieplants.com about ways that you can have more options on your patio or even your deck. And I've got a couple of examples here with some rosemary and kale and chard, and today we want to put this one together for you and we're going to find out the best option and the best ways that we can do this. So, first off, whenever you're working with a container, you want to make sure you pick out the right size. Now, we're using this size container here. It's about an 11 inch container. This is going to allow us to have plenty of room for growth for about four or five items. And these items are going to be small items like herbs, uh, cold crops, lettuces, those type of things. So first, whenever you're building a container like this, you want something very strong that's going to flourish, or as we call it, the thriller, in the center of the pot. So a couple of good things go there. You can use rosemary. Rosemary is a great thing. It works great in a container by itself. Like I said, you can use it for shrubbery. Uh, you put that in the center and it's going to grow up. But for this, we want something that we can use maybe more, more types for salads or, or anything like that. So. What we want to do today is use kale. Now this is the Lacionato kale, or the dinosaur kale. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to remove the uh, plastic off of the biodegradable pot and just cut that up the side. And once we get that out, remove the wrapper and take that first part of peat the biodegradable pot away. Crush the bottom and dig your hole deep. So we want to get that down as deep as we can, and we're going to 
put that kale in there. And the great thing about the pot is you can throw it back in top and everything's good to go. So we've got our kale in here. And for salads, we may want to use lettuce. So I've got some red sales lettuce here in its pack tray. We're just going to push that out, dig a spot here to the side, plant that. When you're planting any type of round container, you want to make sure you put odd numbers. So we've got our center, so we're going to do one, two, three, four. So that gives us five plants in one container. That allows it to grow even. So we've got lettuce there. We're going to put some broccoli in here as well. So we're going to put this here at the front. And we're going to add some romaine lettuce. Put it back here at the back. And you can mix and match this. You can use different colors, uh, you know, all different sorts of things. We've got Swiss chard, and you can even use spinach. Uh, to find out more about using these type things, and even using herb gardens with parsleys, rosemaries, thymes, you know, thymes are going to drape, parsleys are going to flourish around the side. You can find all these type concept ideas at bonnieplants.com or on the mobile app, Homegrown with Bonnie Plants. There really is nothing like that first fresh salad from your garden because you've gone for a while without anything and then you get all those fresh vegetables so early. It's almost as good as that first homegrown tomato of the season. That's right. We almost. still have that to look forward That's to. That's right. For more information on how to make your backyard garden successful, visit bonnieplants.com. You can also find out more about the stories we featured today by visiting their individual websites. For more information on Joe Manor's African Village or to help you plan a visit, visit his Facebook page at facebook.com slash Joe Manor African Village. See more of the magical underwater world of Mobile Bay by visiting the estuarium at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab online at disl.org backslash estuarium. And for more on unmanned aerial vehicles or drones, you can visit emergentrc.com. While you're online, be sure to like our Facebook page or head on over to simplysoutherntv.net for more information on our show or to view past episodes you may have missed. We hope you'll be back with us next Sunday morning as we visit a grit farm. Now, Jim, what is a grit farm? Well, actually, it's a place with a mill that grinds grits. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> Some really nice people there, I think folks would like to see. All right. And we'll also visit a pumpkin farm where they do actually grow pumpkins. But there's so much more to do than just pick your perfect pumpkin. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Simply Southern. I'm Mary Johnson. And I'm Jim Allen. We hope to see you again next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.